this is Hadil. Welcome to HTL Lectures. So let us continue with our CMA Foundation Economics. We have completed the introduction, demand and supply chapter. Now we are going to theory of production. What is a production? Production is an activity where you convert your input into an output. It is a process of converting your input into output. In economics, we can say that it is a creation of utility. See, generally, production means a process to change the raw material into final goods. But in economics, making of goods or creation of goods for the purpose of selling them in the market is called production. When you are creating or producing a product, you can say that there is a production. So we are going through the theories now. So you can see I have said that it is input that we use for producing our output. In economics, we can divide our inputs into four parts. Land, then labor, then capital, and the last one, entrepreneur or owner. These four factors are called as factors of production or generally we can say that these are the inputs using these inputs we produce our output so whatever we use as an input can be termed as a factors of production in economics factors of production can be divided into four land labor capital and entrepreneur now let's go through the features of land the first factor of production generally what is land it is a soil or surface of the earth but in economics we are not just taking the common meaning of land but we are considering all natural resources like forest water climate minerals etc all these are included in land now what are the features of land first feature it is a gift of nature it is not developed or it is not produced it is a gift of nature second point limited in supply limited in supply means you cannot expand the land which is existing in the earth you can expand the ownership if i have an acre of land i can buy another but you cannot expand the actual land in the world the total geographical area of country remains the same in fact certain resources like oil gas coal and some species of wildlife may not be available after sometimes that means some features of land like minerals coals etc this may be extinguished after usage after several usage it may be extinguished from the world so it is limited in supply third one it is immobile that means it cannot be moved i cannot move india to any other country it is a land which is immobile you cannot move like a mobile phone however its ownership can be changed ownership can be transferred but it cannot be moved in physical form only legal form it can be changed fourth is diminishing return land will give you diminishing return because its fertility and all will be reduced if you use them for continuously. Land is subject to law of diminishing return. Increased use of capital and labor on any given quantity of land would give diminishing return. If you use a land for more than what it can do, then it will give you diminishing return. And fifth one, land differs in fertility. See, the fertility of land is different. You cannot produce all of the product at your place because your climate may not be good for the pro uh, some products but your climate may be good for another product so land differs in fertility fertility of land is different in different areas whatever is produced in one state cannot be produced in another state because the climate type of soil and etc will be affecting the production so land differs in fertility these are the five features of land let's repeat gift of nature limited in supply immobile factor diminishing returns land differs in fertility next factor of production is labor let's see what labor is in ordinary usage what do we call ordinary usage physical labor in economics we are adding with physical we are adding mental service if i'm not physically involved in production also i can be considered as labor because i am using my brain or i am using my knowledge to make other labors work so i am not actually physically working but is mentally i am working on it yeah underline this one classical economists and karl marx have considered labor as a sole factor of production see like karl marx and classical economists was thinking labor was the only factors of production which is leading the output now what are the features of labor labor is inseparable see if i am a person you cannot separate me to different workshops if i can work in one place i cannot uh, at the same time i cannot some work some work so it is not separable not like raw materials if uh, you have material material can be split into two three parts and you can use them for different production but for a labor he is inseparable See, here is also given land and capital are separable but labor is not separable labor is perishable what is perishable means perishable means those things whose lifetime is very less or which should be used 
within a few days here the labor is said to be perishable like male vegetables and all labor is also considered as uh, perishable because if i'm not working today my today's labor is finished i cannot bring it back so it is perishable if i have not used the labor properly my labor is perishable if the worker does not find work on a particular day the labor is lost for that day see like other factors production labor cannot be preserved labor cannot be preserved third one supply of labor see uh, in my previous lecture i think i have said in my exemptions to law of supply the graph of labor it is backward bending if you provide more price for the labor he will be working more initially but after sometimes he will demand more leisure time so he will work very less even if you pay him high amount why because he is a human being he needs some rest so he cannot work like animals so he have to rest properly so supply of labor is less at more price if you pay more price the labor will work very less even if you pay him high salary high payment he will not work more after a certain level that is supply of labor means labor offer more labor at lower wages when wage is rises beyond a certain level they prefer to enjoy leisure and supply less labor this is why we call supply curve of labor is backward bending it is backward bending i have said the example it is backward bending it is bending backward the next weak bargaining power the labor has very less bargaining power because they are perishable if they bargain more they will not get the job and if they don't work today they will not have the payment for today if it is perishable so the labor have less bargaining power than other durable goods weak bargaining power because of perishable nature and the fifth one is differ in efficiency of labor some labors have more efficiency and some labors have less efficiency you can see that when you are studying some students are working very less time but they are getting high marks because their efficiency is high and sometimes our efficiency is very less so in that way it is different in different labors third one capital capital means ordinary sense money in economics we can say that money also is a capital but capital includes other machineries tools whatever we use as a investment that also will be forming part of capital money is a form of capital when it is used in purchasing so ultimately it is this man made goods that helps in production of goods so uh, capital includes money as well as whatever we buy with this money that also forming part of capital functions of capital first function they supplies tools and machineries with this capital uh, they will supply tools and machineries for working efficiently okay improves productivity of labor if you bring machineries to your production then the employees efficiency will be increased the production also will be increased capital supplies raw materials capital supplies raw material supply of raw materials on continuous basis required for in production that means when you have a capital intensive production you will need more more raw materials so the raw material supplies will be high in capital intensive production that is what it says capital supplies raw materials in case of capital supplies raw materials will be high generate more employment see these have two concept even though the heading says generate more employment a capital intensive production will generate more employment for technical employees but for unskilled employees it will reduce the manpower so the unskilled laborers will get unemployed so in the fourth point generate more employment but however in the modern production labor replacing machines reduces employment opportunities it have two sides provides transport facilities capital also includes roadways railways ship etc so this will improvise our transportation facilities before we were able to sell only in the nearest market but now we can go far because of the emergence of railways flight bus etc so capital provides transport facilities and it will increase our production and sixth point is payments of factors if you don't generate any profit what you have to give you have to give salary or before generating profit some employees ask you advance salary so from where you will give you will give from your capital your money which is in the business from that you will give so the money the capital have the feature of payment of factors the factors of payment factors of production shall be paid with capital if you don't have sufficient profit capital in the form of money is useful for the payment of advance wages 
even before the goods are sold in the market. So with this we have completed third factors of production. Now the last and final, entrepreneur. Entrepreneurism means the person who coordinates or who overviews all the other factors of production. That means owner, the manager. Those are called as entrepreneurs. The person who organizes the production is called as entrepreneur. Nowadays, an entrepreneur is not considered a separate factor but a special type of human labor. Nowadays, but still in economics you have to study four factors. Now, what are the functions of entrepreneur? First function, he initiate the business. He will take the initiation for the business. He will say what is to be achieved. What is our goal? What market we have to achieve? All these are his initiative. So he have to take initiative for the business. Decision making. He is the decision maker. He is the king in decision making. His words will be the final words. He will be taking all the decisions like the quantity, quality, price, market, etc. All will be taken by him. Choosing the technology. He will choose the technology. Innovations. He will be innovations. Innovations means new idea, new technology. That is what we call innovations. Something new which no one has bought till now. Pay the reward of factors. He will pay the reward for factors of production. He will pay for land. He will pay for labors. He will pay for capital. All will be paid by him. These are the five factors. Uh, five functions of entrepreneur first one initiation of business second one decision making third one choosing the technology fourth one innovation fifth one pay the rewards of factors now what is the production function production function is a functional relationship between input and output if i give this much input how much output i get this relationship are mentioned in production function production function expresses the relationship between physical input and physical output for the given technology so we can say that mathematically we can express it as qx means quantity of x or output of x is equal to the function of factor 1 factor 2 factor 3 factor n so like labor land raw materials whatever the factors that factor will determine your total output whatever you get as a total output it will be based on the functions of other factors of production that is what production function means now what are the types of production functions there are two types of production function one is short run production function another is long run production function what is short run production function short run production function means production function or the relationship between input and output during the short run period what is long run production function long run production function means the input and output relationship during long run please watch my short run and long run video in my general economics playlist so then you will understand what is short run and long run now based on this short run and long run we can divide the production function into short run production function and long run production function short run production function is known as law of variable proportion and long run production function is known as law of return to scale what is law of variable proportion the law of variable proportion is a short run production function in short run we have already said that there are two inputs two types of inputs in short run that is variable input and fixed input and the theory of production says that the relationship between input and output the relationship between input and output is known as theory of production that's what we have studied in our last lecture now law of variable proportion says that in order to change your output you don't have to change your uh, fixed input in short run you just have to change only the variable inputs like labors raw materials and other things so this is what law of variable proportion says for changing your output you have to change your variable inputs so law of variable proportion is a relationship between variable input and output see uh, let's uh, read the explanation it explains the relationship between input and output in the short period yes short period that's it. it was developed by Alfred Marshall. See, according to this law, output can be changed by changing some factors, that is variable factors, while other factors are constant. So this is called law of variable proportion. So law of, this law says that you can change your output by changing some factors, that is variable factors, without changing fixed factors. That's it, law of variable proportion. And Alfred Marshall have studied this law of variable proportion of, or we have experienced this law of variable proportion by taking the agriculture industry as a practical example but he says that this can also be used in industrial and service sector also now before going to the concept of law of variable proportion let us know what is total production average production and marginal production the name itself says that total production means total output per period of time what is the total output that is known as total production average production means total output that you get 
divided by number of labors or number of variable inputs that is known as average product it is the total output per unit of variable input you can see that means average product is equal to total product divided by variable input don't consider the fixed input we are considering only the variable input thus average product is total product divided by number of units and the variable factors now marginal product what is marginal product change in total output due to change in variable input suppose let us take the uh, variable input as labor when you increase your labor from 1 to 2 what is your change in total output that is what we are looking in the marginal product it is the change in total product resulting from using an additional unit of variable factor so when your variable product is changed how much is the change in total production that is what we are studying in marginal product so marginal product says that dq divided by dl that means or in other words we can say that marginal product is equal to delta tp divided by delta variable input that means change in total product divided by change in variable input average product we have already explained this repeated and you can see yes delta tp by delta l that means variable input labor or you can calculate this through mp is equal to tp and minus tp and minus one what is that marginal product is equal to total product at nth unit minus total product at n minus one th unit so when you minus a total product from its previous total product then you will get marginal product the total product that you get from 10th product minus total product that you get from 9th product you just take the difference of these two then you will get the marginal product that's it now explanation now explanation to law of variable proportion now we are going to study what is law of variable proportion law of variable proportion says that in your short run you will be going through three stages you can see here page one stage two stage three okay that's it so in the first stage what it says the relationship in the first stage first stage is a increasing return stage look when you move on and on with your variable input what happens is that initially they will start giving you more output because the variable input is more related to the fixed input fixed input is constant in the short run so when uh, suppose the machine is a fixed machine if you use it in the initial stage it will give you more output than in the coming years because they will be acting in a more productive manner in the initial stage so when you add more and more of variable input your total production will get increased in the stage one this is uh, known as increasing return this is this stage is known as increasing return okay now second stage second stage is also increasing you can see that there is an increase this is the first stage first stage ends in l and after this also it is increasing it is increasing right but the problem is that the increase is not same as in the previous stage in the stage 2 even though the total production is increasing it is increasing at a diminishing rate decreasing rate not as in the stage 1 so we call it as a diminishing return diminishing return or decreasing return decreasing return, return we can call it as decreasing return now the stage 3 is a worst stage where it says that when you add more and more of a labor first you will go to the increasing return in stage one and after you adding more and more you will be moving to the stage two and they will give you more return but after a particular point there is a time that the maximum output is produced after that if you try to add more labor the fixed factors will react negatively they will not give you more return than before because their capacity is already exhausted so they will give you negative return they will start reducing their return they will give you negative return so stage three is a negative return stage so in this way we can say that law of variable proportion is of three stages increasing return decreasing return and negative return now let's uh, go to the points main points in the stage one total production average production and marginal production goes on increasing now second stage total production goes on increasing but increases at diminishing rate okay that's it that is a stage two and stage three total production goes on diminishing that means it is negative this is the three stages total production increasing decreasing and negative now let us see when the unit of labor is increased 
what is happening in the marginal product and average product average product starts reduces start reducing average production start reducing when you increase more and more of labor your average production that per unit per labor production is getting reduced initially they get increased this is in stage one that is increasing return and in the stage one itself they start giving you negative return they start giving you uh, decreasing return when you go to the stage two when you move on to the stage two average production start reducing your per unit production get reduced this you can see in the graph initially in the stage one it is increasing and after that it starts reducing and sorry this is not average production average production there is another need to be added here it will be like this somewhat initially it will be start increasing and after that in the stage one itself it will get reduced and it will go into smaller value and average production will never be negative that will have to be understood this is what average production is in order to understand more about the average production i have uh, given a video in my general economics lecture the relationship between average production and marginal product then if you re if you go through that video you will understand more about the relationship between average product and marginal product in law of variable proportion now marginal production what is the relationship of marginal production marginal production initially get increased and after that it get reduced and after that it gets negative in the stage one it is increasing that means increasing return in the stage two it is decreasing that means decreasing return in the stage three it is negative return stage one they are giving you more return when you add one unit of labor you are getting increasing return you are getting additionally more production but in the stage two when you add more labor the return you get is less than in the stage one that is why the margin production is reduced in the stage three you are getting negative return that's it with this we have studied what is law of variable proportion law of variable proportion and one more thing please go to my video which i will attach somewhere in my cards or something the relationship between average production and marginal production if you watch that video also with this you will understand you will get more idea regarding the relationship law of variable proportion is also called law of diminishing marginal utility marginal return diminishing marginal return see this i want to say the law is uh, not only applicable to agriculture sector but also to industrial sector and service sector okay that's it the law of return to scale and law of variable proportion are related to theory of production which i have already explained there are theories of production under two time frame one is in short run another is in long run when you study the theory of production in short run you call it as law of variable proportion there you have to change only the variable input in order to change your uh, output in case of return to scale it is talking about long run where you are not changing just any one of your variable input but you are changing the complete scale of your production the overall production pattern is changing production technology is changing everything is changing in overall sense okay so law of return to scale says that it is a relationship between input and output in long period see according to this law when all inputs are increased in same proportion when the output is not increased in the same proportion change in output is classified into three stages so you can uh, classify in the same way you have uh, classified your law of variable proportion here also you have three types of law of variable proportion it's not about stage one and two and three but it's talking about uh, increasing return constant return and diminishing return let us see how it is going see you have increased your production scale of production from a to i okay it's going it's going from a to i you have changed your labors also your labors and uh, plant that means your fixed and variable input both you have changed and there are some changes in total production and marginal production in order to understand the concept of increasing return constant return and diminishing return you just have to concentrate on two things that is input and marginal production input and marginal production now uh, when you increase your input for production that means in the first one you have three three input then you are getting marginal production as four in case of option b you have increased from three to six right so there is an increase in marginal production marginal production is increasing in this stage so this you call it as increasing return to scale and from d from d to f you can see from d to f you can see there is no change in marginal production that means you are not getting any additional benefit from increasing your 
input that means whatever you have changed in your input the same proportion your total produce your uh, total production is also increasing and in the third one it is decreasing return your marginal production is decreasing in this stage 864 it is started producing so this is known as diminishing return to scale so this is the three ways a three ways of law of return to scale now let's understand this from the graph see this is a graph relating to scale of production that means your input and proportionate return that means marginal production mp so when you increase your input when you increase your input initially what happens is that you get increasing return that means increasing return says that when your input is increased by 10 percentage suppose then the return you get is 15 percentage then we call it as increasing return to scale and in same way when input is increased by 10 percentage same way the change in production change in production is also same 10 percentage means then you are getting constant return whatever you have increased whatever you have increased in your input then you are getting the same proportion same percentage change in your total production means you are getting constant return I have changed 10 percentage of my input and I'm getting the same change in the output means I am having constant return the same way when input is increased by 10 percentage but what happens to my production what happens to my final output I get only 5 percentage increase so that means diminishing return this is the three law of return to scale increasing return constant return and diminishing return this is explained in paragraph here the proportion the proportionate increase in the output is more than proportionate increase in the input and it is said as increasing return to scale that means it is more output is more output is 15 percentage and input is only 10 percentage change so this is known as increasing return and constant return what is constant return increase in output proportionate increase in output and proportionate increase in input is same that means output is changed by 10 percentage input is also 10 percentage that's it then diminishing return proportionate increase in output is less than proportionate increase in input you have only 5 percentage increase in output but you have changed your input by 10 percentage this is what a law of return to scale says hope you all understood thank you thanks for watching